exceed Xavier Energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch, so let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thanks for showing up. Hi, everybody. Full house today. Look at that. Wow. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. Fallon made it here, everybody. She made it. That's right. <laughs> oh, well, let's start with this, shall we? Imagine, if you will, chatting on video. You know, the video chatting, Zoom, whatever, with someone, and you see something scary, you know, behind their Zoom. Well, it happened to some podcast host in Australia while they were recording their, their show. Look at this. What do you do the snake can, behind you? I do. Right? Snake. <laughs> I can't do. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh no, no, no. And he's just still calmly sitting there. Look at him! Run! <laughs> the group was chatting when the snake dropped from one guy's porch ceiling. The guy didn't even flinch, saying, and I quote, it's only a carpet python. <laughs> yeah. That type of snake, I guess, is a popular pet down under. Yeah. Uh, uh. Not here. Not here. Cue that music, Leo. Here we go. No. Yes. Filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everybody. Happy Monday. Mm, that was a little passive-aggressive open there, huh? We are bit. not passive-aggressive <laughs> here at the Jason Show. Let's say spit there. Anyway, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Why were you tardy? I was getting coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was three minutes late today. Aww. Well. It was about six. No, I'm just joking. No, no, we were, we were worried. We shot that. We, we shot, we call those the cold open. We shot the cold open, and Jeff, because again, our staff, all we do is make fun of each other. So don't Absolutely. be, we yeah. are not sensitive. You don't have to be sensitive about us. And Jeff goes, God, if we, if we make fun of her not being here, and what if something, like, what if, she, if there's a bad reason she's late? Then we're going to feel bad. And I went, no, we're not. Like, no, no, we're not going to feel bad. No, we're good. We're yeah, good. But I made it. So. You, we're glad you're here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So excited. You'll see tomorrow she brought us a little gift. We'll show you that tomorrow. Did you have a good weekend, though? I did. You know who I went to see? Aaron Schwab. Aaron Schwab. Yes. Our audience coordinator. Yeah. Yep. Took my whole family, and it was so amazing. Like, I know. Aaron can sing, but like, and entertain, but the whole family loved her so much. Like, she's phenomenal. She's it was the amazing. Best. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. For those in other cities, you know, uh, Aaron, I call her for good reason the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. She's, uh, uh, she never performed in a bathhouse. But other than that, she's just like <laughs> Bette Midler. I yeah, mean, that right, I know right, of. Right, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, I did meet you in a gay bar, so there is that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, she's just, she's the best. I mean, her shows are the best. Yeah, there was an um, older woman who was getting a little handy with my husband. Oh. <laughs> really? Yep. She started. Aaron, off. control your audio. <laughs> was that Aaron? No. And she was Not like, too far away. she yeah. was. We were the early crowd. They say the eight o'clock crowd gets like crazy, but we were the five o'clock. And he, she was getting tipsy, and she kept yelling out things, like repeating them, so that people would hear that were a little aggressive. Oh. <laughs> and she was rubbing Jake. <laughs> 
She what? <laughs> she... Aaron, control your audience for heaven's sake. What Jake, the hell's going on Jake in your thought shows? it was hilarious. Yeah. He was like, oh, I was like, should I fight her, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Make a whole scene. Oh, yeah. please. Why, why couldn't you bring a bar fight story today? <laughs> oh, come on. I'm sorry. That's my bad. No. Yeah. Next time. The highlight of my week was I got on the train, uh, got off the train properly. Yay, Last week, that's right. you yeah. made it. I, if you... If you missed it last week, I, 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 I took a train uh, into my favorite chicken wing place, which sounds ridiculous, but anyway, <laughs> and I didn't get off of the right stop last uh, last week. Well, I took the same train this week, and the same employee mm -hmm. who takes the train home was sitting in the same seat, and I was so paranoid. I didn't put headphones in. I did nothing. I just sat there, like, listening for every stop. So as I walked downstairs, it's a double-decker train. I walked downstairs for my stop, and the, the gentleman who works at Metro Transit looks at me, and he goes, not going to miss it this time, are you, Jace? And I go, nope, I'm sure not. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I'm off. Well, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. My spoon's gone. I got to get my spoon. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay. With Hollywood back at work, award season is underway. The Golden Globe nominations came out this morning, and two movies lead the way. Barbie got the most nominations with nine, including Best Picture Comedy and acting noms for Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Meanwhile, Oppenheimer got eight nominations, including Best Picture Drama. And if you want to watch it, uh, it's back. The Golden Globes went away for a while. The Golden Globes is Sunday, January 7th on its new network, CBS. Now, speaking of that, we may now we may know now who's nominated for the Globes, but producers are having a really hard time finding a host for the show. Uh, so there's a show, but no host. So <laughs> reports over the weekend say Chris Rock said uh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, but uh, no thanks. Uh, he also. Uh, was asked to host the Globes last year and also said thanks, but no mm -hmm. thanks. Also saying a big uh, no, comedian Ali Wong, who starred in the Netflix show Beef, which I think got some nominations too. And the reports say three hosts, the three hosts of Smartless, oh, wow. uh, Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett, they would be great. They also said uh, absolutely not. Uh, yeah. So, again, it's on CBS. Insiders say CBS may pick someone from its network. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be hosted by the cast of Blue Bloods. <laughs> That's right. I mean... I might not be joking. I, I could be Blue Bloods or the Survivor cast yeah. or, you know, get uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, an old CBS show. Oh, yeah. great yeah. choice. Survivor could be interesting if they had challenges between each award, you know exact, what I mean? Right. Yeah. And then like a like the voting off situation, that'd be fun. Well, I mean, well, uh, speaking, well if they're going to do somebody within their family, how about, well, Drew Carey, he hosts The Price is oh, Right. Yeah. Yeah, Drew could sense. do it. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Get Drew to do it. Or Drew Barrymore? No, no. Oh God! Can you imagine Drew? Uh, if Drew Barrymore hosted it, she would sit close on the couch with every winner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very close. She's starting to do that now. Mm -hmm. I love Drew, but she sits uncomfortably close to all of her guests on the couch. She does this. Very Leo, close. take uh, Fallon's photo, or take. My photo. Thanks. This is how she sits. <laughs> and the guests are always like. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Slowly yeah. try to turn away Drew, give the bit. guest space, yeah. for heaven's sake. Next up, Saturday Night Live was new this weekend. The host, Adam Driver, he was really good. In his monologue, Adam played the piano, who knew that, and sang about his wishes for Santa. Look. Oh, and I'd like uh, people to stop coming up to me on the street saying, you killed Han Solo. I didn't kill Han Solo. Wokeness killed Han Solo. <laughs> Say now it's part of the ritual where I play Oh Holy Night while making unbreakable eye contact with the camera. <laughs> Actually, that's really hard. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I love Adam. One of the most talked about moments from SNL happened during Weekend Update. Uh, cast member Chloe Fineman was joined by a very special guest. Look. The perfect 
perfect holiday gift this year is the dance that Julia Stiles does at the end of the 2001 movie, <laughs> Save the Last Day. Chloe, what are you talking about? Hit it! get into Juilliard. How? Well, you, you didn't see the end of the dance. Hit it! <laughs> <laughs> she looks exactly the same. Julia starred uh, in Save the Last Dance nearly 23 years ago. Oh, and she looks exactly the same. She, she does. Doesn't hasn't changed a no. bit. One of my favorite things is all of those movies of my generation, like Save the Last Dance, had these epic dance breakouts that we look at now and they're horrible. But at the time, we're like, oh, she really brought it. Like that yeah. was so good. And now, like with her and Hillary Duff and stuff, all these people of my generation, everyone mocks their dances on like TikTok. And I'm like, come on. At the um, time, they were bringing it. You know. I'll see your generation, <laughs> and I will raise you Footloose. Oh, okay. uh, we have uh, Footloose. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean that is great. <laughs> Kevin dancing, da uh, Kevin Bacon dancing in a warehouse. That probably was hot. Oh, there's nothing better than the "Let's Hear It for the Boy" uh, dance when they're dancing, uh, car washing. <laughs> I've never danced. Oh, I've never danced or sung washing my car. No. But Kevin Bacon did it anyway. We have a lot more to come. I'll do it now though. Anyway, we're gonna go take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's the battle between old money and new money. And again, Fallon and I are team new money in this show. Uh, <laughs> you'll see why. Uh, in 19th century New York City, what are we talking about? Well, the new money isn't afraid to cause a little stir in the hit HBO show, The Gilded Age. Look. The fact remains, he's been passed around like an old shoe. I'm serious, George. He says he's afraid his plans for the opening night have changed. He knew it was coming. Haven't you got your committee today? Will you tell them? No, and nor will you. Won't well, Mrs. Astor trumpet it abroad? Then we must trumpet louder. When you talk like that, you make me quite nervous. Good. We have... I love that show more than our show. I, I, uh, <laughs> the season two finale. <laughs> the season two finale of the Gilded Age airs next Sunday on HBO and Max. And joining me now are two of the stars. Yeah, hello, they're here. Carrie Coon and Morgan Spector, everybody. Okay. I. Uh, I. 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 I try to act professional and not fan out. I've been doing this for a long time, but. I, uh, I love you two more than I really should. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. I know. It's a, a, you don't have I to respond. I think you're not alone in feeling that way. Yeah. And, and just so you know, all of us here at this show, we're team new money. We are team new money 100%. That's right. <laughs> Carrie. The only team. Carrie, let me start with you. All kidding aside, it always starts with the written word. It always starts with a good script, good characters crafted by great writers. When you got the script, uh, you know, two, three years ago, whenever you guys went into production, what was your first uh, reaction? Oh, I mean, what a wonderful invitation, especially to be asked to do a period piece, which is something I've always wanted to do. I've done it on stage, but again, only 1,100 <laughs> seats. You know, only a certain number of people in Wisconsin have seen that work. So it was wonderful to get to bring this period, this really dynamic period in American history, alive um, for a much broader audience. 
And Morgan, how the about costumes? You? Oh. Come on. Yeah, the co well, I was gonna say, Morgan, I was gonna say I'm, I wanted to flip this. Usually, uh, you always ask, you know, uh, the interviews were always ask uh, the ladies, oh, what was it like putting on the, you know? But for you, the male costumes to me are just as fantastic. Well, what's mm -hmm. it like stepping into that wardrobe? Is it easier to get into character when you're wearing that wardrobe? Yeah, un un unquestionably. I, I mean, I don't. In that one of the shots you're playing, you can see those waistcoats that we wear. They're not. They're not as nearly as uncomfortable as corsets, but they have something of the same effect. They sort of, they pull you in and up, and they give you that sense of, um, of sort of poise and uh, an elongated spine. Um, and yeah, they really, they really give you that sense of um, power and precision. And and the, you know, the the costumes are all custom built to our bodies. They're made by. You know, artisans who who are still capable of this kind of craft. I think it is. You know, our our designers have had to source our costumes from from Europe, uh, all from various different countries in the EU because there are only only certain kind of craftspeople who can really do these, who can still st who still have these skills. Um, so yeah, it's it's really it is it is it is a thrill. It is an unusual privilege to get to wear clothes that are as finely wrought as these ones are. So, yeah, it, it certainly helps. Carrie, the saying goes, you know, a rising tide raise all, raises all boats. Look, the boat that you guys have, what I mean by that, your cast is spectacular. What a toy box. What an amazing toy box to play in. What is it like? You know, and I know that's a really generic question, but is it just as much fun as we think it is playing with Baranski and the, and the gentleman next to you? I mean, what is it like in that yes. toy box? There's a lot of singing. <laughs> There's a lot of singing and a lot of just theater nerds nerding out over yeah. theater. Uh, great stories. We get to hear all the wonderful stories. You know, Christine and Cynthia were on stage decades ago, and, and Christine was playing her mother. You know, they've, just, they've all known each other a really long time. And even just people like Danae Benton up and coming to hear Danae just singing away in her dressing room. I mean, it really is as fun as you think. We really, I'm sorry, you guys, we have a disgustingly good time. No! <laughs> Morgan, my last question for you in our last 30 seconds. Uh, I know everyone here on our staff, we're rabid fans. What's the, been the fan reaction to you when you're on the street, my friend? Um, you know, usually it's just people come up and they're like, because I, I don't live in New York City, I live in the country, and so often people, if they see me and they know the show, they're, they're like, why are you here? Like, what are you doing in this small place? And then they, and then they, um, they come up and then say, they, they punch they, you in you know, the stomach? Yeah, they, they <laughs> invariably just come up and, yeah, just give me a real whack. No, uh, yeah, people, people are kind, and I'm honestly always just thrilled that people have responded to the show, so it's, it's always nice. Well, we have responded. Uh, big fans of the both of you, as I said at the beginning. Thank you so much. Continued success, you guys. Thank, Thank you so much, Jason. Thanks for having us, right. you guys. Thanks, guys. Carrie Coon, Morgan Spector. The season finale of The Gilded Age airs Sunday night on HBO and streams on Max. And if you didn't know, uh, same creator that did Downton Abbey. You're watching it as well. I didn't realize it was already the, the season was coming to an end, though. Last night was the penultimate. It was okay. setting up for a really great finale. And Morgan Spector is horribly unattractive. <laughs> 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 the audience is like not quite sure what to think of me on that one. No, he he is uh, he has a spread in the new inter in, in the new interview magazine. It should be illegal. It oh. really should be. I mean, seriously, if I looked half like that, I would. What I would, would you never, do? I would never wear clothes. Okay, I would fair. just all oh, yeah, yeah yeah ever ever yeah. A very but thank, different TV show. Very different TV show. And time that's, slot. That's right, yeah. <laughs> time slot would be very different. Yeah. More dish now. Taylor Swift returned to Arrowhead Stadium to cheer on her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, yesterday. And some viewers got a big surprise when one of the CBS announcers said this during the game. By most people, as you see, Kelsey's wife, Taylor Swift, in the audience, or I'm sorry, the girlfriend. Not yet. What <laughs> a throw and great feel by Kelsey. Ooh. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, a little early on that one. A little early, yeah. or is it? Well, there are predictions on the gossip websites that it could happen on her birthday this, like, Wednesday. It won't. But it, there are predictions. I love that you know it's her birthday this Wednesday. Well, it's Jeff and Taylor Swift's That's birthday. That's right. It's executive Wednesday. producer Jeff's yeah. birthday. Yeah.
Of course I know her birthday. Are you kidding me? Of course you do. Yeah. yeah. That was Tony Romo quickly correcting himself after calling uh, Taylor Kelsey's wife. Yeah. Yeah, whoopsies. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Up next, Christmas commercials are everywhere these days, but a new hot... I know, right? This this one's this, this one's really emotional. It's been doing the rounds online. A new holiday campaign from Sh uh, Chevrolet is bringing all the feels. So it, if you've seen it, you're like, oh, God. It features a young woman helping her grandmother remember things from the past as they drive around. It's very long, but we, we pulled a little part of it. Look. Sunshine. Graham says this is where he first kissed you. No. Looks so lovely. I kissed him. He was far too shy. Almost Bill, I need to see Bill. Oh, he can't do the dinner alone. Oh, that's just I literally. That's just a snippet. That's just a little snippet, but you get the idea. It's five and a half minutes. It has more already, more than two million views on YouTube. And it starts off, and the grandma's just sitting there in a recliner, uh, really nonverbal, not really speaking to anybody in the family. And then the granddaughter goes out and, oh, this kills me. Oh. Yeah. And then she recognizes her husband, and uh, the spark of life kind of comes back at, at the very end of the commercial. After driving around with her granddaughter, and the granddaughter is showing her all these landmarks like the drive-in theater and stuff and they of course get in the old Chevy it's whatever ad agency did that uh, Chevy needs to keep them yeah because that's oh a really gosh. great ad. no kidding it's really yeah. really good <laughs> what I'm just like one of those people that when I'm sad, I overly do it. Like if I'm sad, I'll play sad music intentionally or watch something sad to get the cry out. So now I have my new thing. There it is. Just like, play oh, that. I'm having yeah. a down day. Let's watch the Chevy commercial. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Adam Sandler is a lot of things. Actor, comedian, singer. But how about style icon? Well, <laughs> okay. according, according to Gen Z, uh, those born in the late 90s to uh, the two 2010s, Adam is a style icon. Why? Well, there are thousands of videos on TikTok and, and social with people showing off their outfits that were inspired by Adam. <laughs> if you don't know, if you've never seen him on a talk show, he's known for his oversized t-shirts, cargo pants, baggy board shorts, baggy sweatshirts. And in a recent interview, Sandler says his personal sense of style is whatever is clean in the closet. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, yeah, it why is. Why not? Why not? It is, every, everything is cyclical, mm -hmm. and it is right now baggy, everything is baggy. It is, Everything, sure. and that was what we had in the 90s. Uh, everything was very loose. I love it. Just keep the stretch <laughs> yeah. and elastic alive, please. Yeah. I know, but skinny jeans are still alive, and I wish somebody would take them in the back and put them down. Oh. Uh, yeah. Don't do that to millennial women. How dare you? What? Millennial women like their, like, skinny jeans. They do? Yeah. Oh. And, and for guys, there's an expiration date because if we wear skinny jeans after a certain age, we look like a pair. We look like a little pair. Just a little, a little male pair. Okay. You know, yeah. so yeah. there is, it's like milk. You can only wear them for, it's uh, lim uh, expiration date. Okay, on those. gotcha, yeah. gotcha, yeah. No, 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 yeah. We have a great show. Go get some more milk. We'll be back after this, back in a moment. in just a little bit. From HGTV, our friends Brad and Heather Fox are back, showing you how to decorate for the season and make it last for the season. Plus, what are the hot design trends coming in the new year? We'll tell you. And it's Monday. That means we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. That and more when we come back. Two weeks and counting until Christmas Day. Just think about that. Many people decorate their homes, but if you're gonna do uh, go all do all the work, why not make sure those decorations can last behind the holidays and into the near new year? Here to show us how to do just that is our good friend Heather Fox from Fox Homes. Everybody, welcome back, sweetie. Thank I you. love that sweater. Thank you. You're so stylish. Uh, okay, you know this is my take on red and green Christmas. Right I love here. that. 
I, I, the, we, Jeff, when we came out here and you put this up, I said, I love everything about this. So let's start with just the concept. And I never really thought of it this way. If you're going to do the work of going down to the storage unit and getting the containers and putting up all the stuff, why just limit it right. to just the Christmas holiday season? Exactly. And I think for me, it's like busyness and maybe like a touch of laziness, right? Like, I don't want to redecorate every month. So let's like spread it out. Make it last a little bit. Okay. So look past. You're going to see a trend. Look past the traditional, the reds and the greens. Yes. What do we have? What should so we do? I love a great traditional Christmas, red and green, but it's going to scream Christmas, right? Yeah. So then all of a sudden January 1st comes and it kind of feels like it's time to put it away. If you go with the take that's a little bit less like traditional green and less traditional <laughs> red, so maybe the pinks or even like the wine kind of color. Um, and then there's a, obviously a wide array of greens that you can use and you kind of match them up and add a little bit of this gold like you see on this table runner here and kind of just spreads it, makes it last a little longer. I always do a, a, a metal check-in with you, and we'll talk more about <laughs> it when Brad joins us, but because, you know, it goes like, I remember in the, the 2010, silver was very big. Yes. Gold has been prominent. Is it still prominent? It is, okay. yes. But I actually think that it's now more of a mixture. So we're not just doing brass or just doing gold. We're mixing in maybe a little bit of like rose gold, some uh, silver, really everything. Black, matte black. And not just colors. Trees are our friends. Trees this. are yeah. our friends, yes. Okay, so just because it's a tree doesn't mean that it has to scream Christmas, right? Yeah. So a lot of these trees are, they're, they're like longer season friendly, right? So you could have these sitting out on your credenza or, you know, on your dining table, and it's going to last a little bit longer. You can definitely take it through to February. And if you go with the pinks, hello, it's like Valentine's, uh, Valentine's Day. Day. Yeah. Day. And then the, I mean, and if you, and if you're really lazy like me, re, uh, the green, St. Patrick's Day, go to Mars. <laughs> you know, go to, say, go to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we, speaking of gold. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So metallics, right? Metallics are also another way to like really bring in kind of that holiday vibe but it can stretch through, right? Yeah. So mercury glass, anything that has kind of the movement like this does here, this is gonna definitely work throughout Christmas, but then extend longer. And what's great about things like these is that you can do uh, like little tea lights, little candles, but you can also do like little flowers, uh, maybe some greenery in there to make it just kind of pop out. And those you can just place wherever, put it on a shelf, put it on a credenza, buy your TV. and. Or even if you do a mix, I was just thinking this, that if you have a table setting that is gold or silver, and maybe you do have some red, green elements, just remove those. You got it. And keep the rest of the stuff through February, or again, March. Yeah. I mean, yeah. March, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What are, what's this? So this is another kind of take again on the table linens, right? Because of course it's beautiful if you have the traditional Christmas vibe happening, going with something that's red and green. This is red and green, but its own kind of take. These are napkins. Um, cloth napkins really can just add a lot to your table, yeah. right? They can make it look like it's styled right away. And this can feel holiday, yeah. but it's definitely going to extend past. And I love the way like this uh, checker here on this table runner definitely works year round, but it can feel holiday. You add this and you can just kind of, I mean, this could last all year, but it also could really feel Christmassy. And finally over here, uh, the, the, the faux, what is this, uh, a Yeti? What is this? Uh, <laughs> what is this? Uh, <laughs> Yes, it is a Yeti. Yes, yes. Oh, Yeti. Yeah, we're gonna go with Yeti. But no, what, what are we? What are we saying here? So here, adding a sheepskin really to a dining chair, a sofa, a bed, a bench. This is a way to make it like ultimately feel just kind of cozy. So it's more winter than it is holiday. Same with this texture. Just having things that have like that thicker, cozier texture. And this is a way you could change out your pillows for. Um, more so winter than holiday, right? So if you have different textures throughout the rest of the year and then as it gets cold, having cozy things around. And it's not, I, I think people, when they uh, when they think of buying the holiday decorations or they buy, it, you don't have to break the bank. You can find right. some, some cheap goods, not cheap goods, but economical goods Absolutely. in a variety of places. Absolutely, and honestly, I have to say, I mean, I have to give credit to Target. They are on fire this year. They have great tree options. Um, they have great you know other selections that are inexpensive you are right I have seen yeah. I mean I've seen a lot of Yeti at the Target <laughs> and again that's why I asked you about gold because I'm still seeing a lot of gold mm -hmm. 
uh, kind of elements that I would not just deem for the Christmas season. I would just say winter Year at round. all. Yeah. I mean, for the whole for the whole season. Yeah, I, I love agree. it. And. Uh, what so this is like a, a garland. I'm sorry, I don't so. mean to just touch these little things. I was like, no. what is that? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, so this is a garland. I also love like a traditional greenery garland as well. And yeah. I think that that could be something on a table setting, could be really beautiful. And like you said, take it out then after Christmas. That's easy. Yeah. Something like this lasts a little longer. Um, this is a way, again, you can put it on a tree. You can just kind of lay it like this on a table. You could put it a, across a credenza. Um, lots of options, but because it's not traditional gold, it or lasts sorry, longer. traditional red and green, yeah, it lasts a little longer. I love it. So what can we expect for next year after the break? Heather's husband, Brad, will join us as well and find out what's on trend when it comes to home decor for the new year when we return. Back after this. <laughs> Heather and Brad Fox from Fox Homes. Uh, let's talk about the latest design trends as we head into 2024. And uh, we should say, welcome Brad as well. Thank you very much, yeah. Okay, Brad, let's, uh, here's the headline. Wood is back, y'all. Wood is back. Now, mm -hmm. but all joking aside, what do, what, what, do, what do we mean wood? What kind of wood is back? Um, I would say uh, light woods and and like maybe walnut, mid-tone, not a lot of like dark cherry yet. We're not there yet, but as we see, we go from white enameled cabinets everywhere to now wood, maybe we'll get to the dark stuff, I don't know. But right now, it's a lot of like oak and walnut and th those kind of tones. Okay, so let me ask, because uh, yeah, look at this. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I, lo I love a medium, because I have like medium oak in my, uh, in my kitchen, mm -hmm. and I have a dark uh, countertop, and I wondered if it would look good with a white countertop. And I'm looking at this, thinking, yes, it would. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I'm showing houses now, and people are like, "Oh, it's white kitchen." And I'm like, "What? Ha like that okay, was all yeah. people wanted." I was going to ask. My mom is in that camp. She loves a completely yep. all white kitchen. Yep. It's it's out now. I mean it. I'll, all I'm saying is I'm hearing disappointment when it's white. You know, I don't know that that means it's, it's neutral, right? White is We're a getting neutral. getting some booze in the audience. <laughs> that's all I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just reporting back what yes. I'm hearing. Yeah. That's all, you know. Okay. So, wood. 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 All except no cherry yet. <laughs> I mean, we're not there yet. Not I mean, yet. That, I leave no. that to her. No, no. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's interesting though because it's not just in cabinetry. We're now seeing it in trim, like mm -hmm. around windows and doors, oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. even in doors also. Like so, it's doors. it's yeah. really kind of making this like. Because yeah. remember splash. the trend, uh, what it was, it, everyone was painting over their wood doors. Yes. And I'm like, yes. what are you doing? Yeah. What yeah. are you doing? Now they're stripping them all down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we go from wood to, quote, interesting paint. What yeah. is this oh, right here? Clay. Yeah, like this here in the, the uh, like, black texture. Um, it just has a ton of movement. It's beautiful. And then, like, this photo, this shows a full paint treatment. So you have the ceiling, the walls, the trim, everything painted the same color. Same with this one here. Here, the ceiling and the walls are painted and we matched wallpaper so that it kind of like pulls that color throughout the room. I've asked you this before and I know how some people feel about painting ceilings that it can make the room look and feel smaller. It Where can. do you stand on that? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely You're love like, it. Yes. I, yeah, even <laughs> dark, maybe it does make the room feel a little bit smaller if you have a really small room, but Typically, I think that it just makes it feel so stylized, so well designed, and it just is an element of. Uh, yeah, it's kind of puts yeah. a bow. I would think it maybe put a bow, and I love that those sconces above that counter. Anyway, okay, unique tile. Yeah, that's another one, also and we're seeing it in not just backsplashes in a kitchen, but now people are kind of taking it into bathroom tile, floor tile, wall tile, and oftentimes it's taking a really oh, like basic tile. Isn't that cool? It's just a subway tile in a white and then a seafoam green, and we mixed and matched. That I love. Mm -hmm. that, that I cool? love. That's so, local, too. Yeah, local tile maker Mercury Mosaics, they made this tile for us. It is absolutely incredible every piece is handmade it's so beautiful every piece is a little bit different it's 
really lovely. Okay, so before, because we're going to talk real estate, but before I get really quick, yep. let's go back to the white kitchen. Mm -hmm. Let me save those people from swallowing uh, their tongue. <laughs> um, right, if yeah. they have an all white kitchen, isn't it easy to just kind of add maybe a backsplash mm -hmm. to update it? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that it update, I still think an all white kitchen is beautiful, but yep. am I right so on that? Just add an element of color somewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, like Brad said, it's not that all white kitchens are out, it's that Sometimes they can feel a little bit sterile if everything's right. White, right. white. So if you have white countertops and white backsplash, so maybe it is just making a, a little change. I mean, Hardware. The good news with or, white is that you can paint it. It's already painted, so you can paint it again. So you could make the island right. whatever Heather tells you to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's go back to you, Brad. Real estate. How yeah. are we looking? Okay, we are at a turning point, a surprising turning point. We always say mid-February is when the market heats up for spring, right? Well, the rates went down about 0.75, 1%, which was, it, the rates are the big story, right? They're at 8% at one point. Now they're at like seven, and now they're heading towards like mid sixes. As soon as that changed, we had listings that were three, four weeks on the market that would never have sat before. Now they're in multiple offers. So the rates are really driving the market right now. And normally between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's quiet. Like we're all sipping our coffee and like twiddling our thumbs. And it is like resurging now. So my warning to everybody, and if you're thinking about buying a house, there will be more inventory in the spring, but it's starting to fire up now. So you could still kind of get a deal maybe in the next couple months before the chaos happens and all the crazy Around happens. Super Bowl, isn't Super it? Super Bowl, yeah, that's yeah. right, you're right. So buy yeah. a TV and buy a house. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Brad and Heather Fox, yeah. everyone, for more information. <laughs> get the 80 inch TV to put in your new house and call Brad and Heather. Yeah. Anyway, for more information, head to foxhomes.com. And if you're in Minnesota, visit their beautiful store in Edina, uh, the Foxwell. Com. We'll be right back. Back after this. Oh, that was great. I'm shocked. That the, it's Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Every week, we take time to hear from you, no matter what the topic, no matter how mean the email. It's time to open up the Jason Show mailbag. Roll it, Leo. Well, first, uh, and I was told not to read this before the show, but uh, here we go. First, a beautiful message from Kathy. Hi, Kathy. She says, I just wanted you to know how much your show meant to my husband. He was home in hospice, and your show was the only time I was able to hear him laugh again. You made him forget his pain. He passed away peacefully in April, and your show continues to be a bright spot in my morning. Well... Thank you, Kathy. That's real. I mean, uh, my goodness. What's that's 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 it. That's nothing better than that. I know. And Jeff, when I sat down this morning to talk to Jeff, he goes, "Okay, we're gonna do the mailbag. Just know you'll probably cry right off the bat." Yeah. And I'm like, "Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, but <laughs> Kathy, we love you here, uh, and, and we're glad that you like the show." Next up is a question on Facebook from Cordy. That's a cool name. Cordy says. Hey, I know Jason has talked about Las Vegas and uh, gave some suggestions of good deals for eating and drinking. Where do I find his suggestions? I'm going in a few weeks and always agree with his travel thoughts. Girl, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> here's the one that everybody asked me for, and it is called, this is the best deal. Now, this is if you enjoy a cocktail um, and this my favorite deal is a place called Ocean One and it is in the Planet Hollywood shops you know like across from the Bellagio the shopping center it is a restaurant and they have like three for ones oh. for ten dollars and uh-huh and you can <laughs> and you can have any liquor like it's oh. it's not just the cheap stuff with like a bear on the cover of the vodka no it's it's you can get kettle one but three for ones and because it's vegas you don't have to drink them there ah, that's they true, will pour yeah. the three in a giant sippy cup for you and how do you know that what how do you know that my family told me oh, okay anyway <laughs> Oh, and then Secret Pizza, too, is my other favorite. Secret Pizza is a secret pizza place inside the Cosmopolitan. Has no signage. It's on the third floor of the Cosmopolitan. You go down a hallway lined with album covers, and there is the best New York-style pizza oh. place hidden in uh, the Cosmopolitan. Nice. Yeah. Next up, a message from Dan in Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids is one of our new stations. Hello. He has a comment on Shane, who filled in for me last week when I was sick with Fallon. Dan said, 
says, the lady replacing Jason this week reminds me of Paris Hilton. Oh. So I mean, she is tall, blonde, and beautiful. Yeah, so. let's do a side by side. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've never. I mean, I I personally think Shane is more beautiful, but of that's course. just me. Of yes. Course. Yeah, Shane. For for our new viewers, and I don't know if you guys said this, a little history. Shane is was the first Jason Show producer ever. Mm -hmm. She produced us and then uh, moved on, and now she's an anchor and couldn't love her more. Next, an email from Laura. Hi, Laura. She loved the throwback piece uh, we aired last week, <laughs> featuring photographer Eric as an elf. <laughs> yep, that's my guy. There he is. Nailing it. That's that's my boy. Uh, Laura says we are watching Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, and Eric resembles the tall elf. Let's do another side by side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I actually, I actually agree more with this one than the Shane one. Yeah, that's my buddy. Uh huh. Well, finally, you all really loved. Boy, did you! Uh, our latest fast food field trip on Friday. Stephanie Hansen, executive producer Jeff, and photographer Eric and I planned to get the McRib at McDonald's on our latest one, but it was sold out. So we ended up going to Popeyes, or as we called it, Popeyes, uh, to eat the new wings. Well, Linda starts us off. She says, these fast food field trips are even better than James Corden's carpool karaoke. <laughs> Keep it up. Thank you. That's a great compliment. Yes. Julie says, thank you. Julie says, this segment just killed me. And now I just watched it again and I'm laughing, wheezing, crying, oh, gosh. and may have just peed my pants <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, Julie, if I can make you do that, that's great. Wow. Uh, yeah. And MJ says, I absolutely love these so much. I wish you could do one every week. I was laughing so hard. And Mary has a suggestion. She says, you should have contests for a fan to travel along with you each week. OMG, that would be so fun. Uh, here's the problem. Um, you would sue us uh, because uh, we yell at each other. Um, we cuss at each other. Um, yeah. We make fun of each it's other. I mean, aggressive. Jeff Fine. called me fatty, and I called him hungry, hungry heifer. <laughs> My favorite part of this week's is when Stephanie hands you the sandwich and it's half eaten. Oh my God! <laughs> That's my favorite part. She's like, "Well, I had to get a good sample size." She, Your face was like. <laughs> it <laughs> it looked bite. like a surfboard after a great white got a hold of it. I was like, because it was it, because it came to me from the back yeah. seat, and I pulled it around. I'm like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> Stephanie has a very small little mouth and I'm like how did that happen yeah she's an expert food taster she you know? is yeah. thanks everybody we're gonna take a break we'll be back <laughs> after this oh that was I love that part too yeah. Don't forget, we sell Jason Show merch in our online swag store. And just in time for the holidays, we have some new items, including a mug, a blanket, uh, a new tote bag that I love, and some sweatshirts. Aim your phone uh, at the QR code. Boom! It'll take you right to the shop. We also have links on our socials. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Okay, now we're going to put on Judy. If only you knew what happens during the commercial break. <laughs> but you gotta come see us, and then yep. you will. Anyway, hey, before... We got we got the cutest darn Christmas card uh, made for us. Look at this. So this, boom, Fallon got one. Leo, take a shot of Fallon. So this is from Brianna, Kathy, Regan, Regan, Regan? Regan. Reagan, Reagan and Katie and they wrote they made like the the, the sweetest homemade Christmas cards for us and just part of it is um, uh, their grandma's favorite quote that we say on the show is what I end the show with every day which is go out there and be yourself because no one uh, can tell you you're doing it wrong so thank you guys so much we appreciate that balance has yeah and they even got our outfits right and spelled my name right. Nobody spells my name right, so thank you. <laughs> like, nobody does. Please, you've been on the show now since September, and people still email me and they go, we love Falcon. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And honestly, that's fine. You yeah, know, that's whatever. fine. Yeah. My favorite is we love felon. Felon. <laughs> <down, that's right. laughs> Tomorrow, 50 Traveler is back uh, with the latest airline deals ahead of the holiday travel season, plus the latest deals for 2024. But right now, if you are watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. This is so nice. So sweet.